This is a big car. In fact, I don't think people realize just how massive the Kia EV9 really is. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. My name's Sam Evans. I'm the Electric Viking. I'm coming to you from Bangkok in Thailand. Thank you for tuning in. What a day. What another day, another great day in paradise, the paradise of planet Earth that we are kind of slowly destroying, but then at the same time, trying to rebuild EVs. Yeah, they do help, actually. They do help. Sure. Some of you have emailed me saying, I bought an EV, but I'm one of uh, the 7 billion people on the planet. Don't worry, there's not 7 billion cars, nowhere near. But hey, one step at a time. The more people we get out of big gas guzzling SUVs into big electric SUVs, the better. Now, yes, big electric SUVs are not really ideal. They're not ideal at all, in fact, but hey, they're definitely a much better alternative to a Toyota Land Cruiser or a Nissan Patrol or any big car like that because the Kia EV9, believe it or not, is a competitor to those cars. You might not think so. You might be thinking it's a Kia, actually, Kia make better cars than Toyota and Nissan. They do. It's a fact. They have the EV6. Tell me what car that Nissan or Toyota have that is even closely comparable when it comes to the technology in that car. There is nothing. There's nothing. That's the truth. In the Nissan area, it's nice. EV6, it, it, it poops all over it. That's the truth. EV9 will be using Kia EV6 technology, but have a bigger battery pack. And the EV9... I've got to say, I quite like it. So here are the details and here are the specs. EV9, 336 miles of range. That's, that's a lot of range for a car this big. So Kia has revealed the specifications, details, but not the weights. So if you're looking for the weight of this car or the models of the, the weight, no one knows what they are. I've seen the comment revealed. Bad journalism. You didn't tell us what the weight of these cars is. Well, maybe you just send your emails and your messages to Kia rather than going off for journalists that don't have that info because it wasn't provided to them. Based on parent company Hyundai Motor Group's electric global modular platform, Kia's first three-row electric SUV, meaning seats in the middle and at the back, features three powertrain configurations with a fourth generation battery technology being used. I, I think it's actually going to be much bigger on the inside than some of its competition. It's pretty cool looking. The base model, EV9 rear-wheel drive, this is the cheapest version, which is estimated to be priced at around about $60,000 US dollars. We'll have a 76 kilowatt hour battery that powers an electric motor delivering 160 kilowatt, that's 216 horsepower, and 258 pound-feet of torque, that's 350 newton meters. You're probably thinking, that's not a lot of power for what is a big car. You'd be right. It's not a lot of power, not a lot of torque. It's surprisingly low on power and torque. The reason is to try to give the car more range because that battery pack is fairly small. It's the same battery pack that's in the Ionic 5 and the Kia EV6. And, you know, this is a much bigger car than those vehicles. Zero to 62 miles an hour is 8.2 seconds. It's not a speed rocket, but it's, you know, it's still relatively fast enough for the average person. You don't really need a, a, a car like this. It's just a family car for most people. For those who care more about range, you can get the mid-spec model. That's the Kia EV6 rear-wheel drive long-range model that has the bigger battery pack. It's a 99.8 kilowatt hour battery. It's not an LFP battery, not lithium-ion phosphate. It's a ternary battery, as it's called in China. So it uses a nickel-based battery chemistry, NCMA battery, I believe. It has 160 kilowatt as well, which is 201 horsepower. It uses that same rear motor, 160 kilowatt as well, 215 horsepower. And it gives the car with that bigger battery pack, much bigger battery pack, obviously, a range of 336 miles, which is 541 kilometers. So that's pretty good range. That's a WLTP range. It's not a, like a CLTC Chinese range. It's at a legit range. Will you get that in the real world? Probably get around 500 kilometers. That's all you need. That's That makes this car a real contender for a lot of people. The big battery powers the EV9 all-wheel drive version. Obviously, the all-wheel drive version has more power. It's going to be heavier, extra motor. It's going to get you less range. 
That car comes with the same pack, 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, but it has 283 kilowatt, which is 380 horsepower, and 442 pound-feet of torque, which is 600 newton meters. In that configuration, it'll do zero to 62 in six seconds. But if you want to go faster, you can. If you want to pay Kia some more money for an, uh, it's like an over-the-air update. You can press a little button in the car at any point, which is what Tesla does as well, which I think is a smart move. And then you can get more power. Now, this is called an optional boost feature and it drops the acceleration time to 5.3 seconds. It's available on the Kia Connect online app store. I think you can access that from the car. The boost feature increases torque to 516 pound feet, which is 700 newton meters, making it, you know, a real rival. Now, can this vehicle tow? Kia says it can. Towing is not, unfortunately, as good as some of its rivals. It tows two and a half tons. Obviously, most of its rivals in this category will tow around three and a half tons. So towing is a, a little bit of a disappointment. I was hoping it would match its competitors, its gasoline powered competitors. Kia haven't revealed the range for the other two models. They've only revealed the range for the longest range model. Obviously, strategic decision to make it sound maybe better than it is because the other thing they've done is reveal the range for the vehicle with 18 inch wheels. Probably not a lot of buyers that will get this vehicle with 18 inch wheels, even though they should, because it'll give them more range and it makes more sense and more comfortable. Smaller wheels, bigger tires, it's gonna be more comfortable. That's what I think you should do if you buy one of these. That's what I'd be doing if I was gonna buy one of these. Will I buy one of these? Well, I don't know. I definitely would consider it. I mean, I've ordered a Cybertruck. I would love to get the Cybertruck. Will I get those in? Will we get those in Australia anytime soon? Aussies, don't listen to the media. They're full of crap. The Cybertruck is definitely coming to Australia, but it's just years away because there's 1.7 million people in America that want one. So we'll get them. We just have to wait. Is this a competitor to the Cybertruck? Well, it's quite a bit smaller than a Cybertruck, but it will compete against the Cybertruck because the Cybertruck has the vault, which can be used in a way as an SUV. You actually lower that rear, rear wall. This is the wall between the bed and the cabin, and it basically, basically becomes an SUV. So yeah, they could compete, but will they? Not sure. So as with other EGMP-based platform vehicles, EV6 and also the Ionic 5, and the Ionic 6, the EV9 has the vehicle to load capability. That means that through its integrated charger control unit, it enables 3.7 kilowatt of power for users to charge whatever they want, power tools, laptops, camping equipment, uh, whatever. Now, Kia says that this vehicle will have le level three autonomous driving capability. Is that true? Um, I can't say definitively it's not, I can say it's extremely unlikely. Maybe they're going to be in level three in just like certain places, but then it's not level three. So yeah, I'm confused by that. We'll see if it does. Hey, phenomenal. I mean, that would make the car even better. I mean, look at that interior. That's a really nice interior. Look at that interior in comparison to its competitors, its gasoline powered competitors. It's miles ahead of the Land Cruiser. It looks so nice on the inside. This looks like a really nice place to be. Now the level three autonomous technology, they say it's enabled where conditions permit, whatever that means. There is 15 sensors, two LIDARs, HDP will be able to scan for and detect objects in a full 360 degree field of view to prevent potential collisions. HDP will be available in the EV9 GT line model in the future. So it sounds like it's gonna come in the more expensive version of the car and maybe not the others. The EV9 also introduces the Key Connect store, which is where you can go to get that power upgrade if you wanna pay for it. That enables customers to purchase digital features and services on demand. So I'm guessing there'll be features like heated seats that you can pay more for, kind of like what you get with BMWs these days. This will allow them to continuously upgrade the capability of the EV9 with over the air updates all at any time. Now, to be fair, I mean, uh, Almost every legacy car company has said they'll have over the air updates which will enable their cars to update themselves every few months. And they've been saying this for years. Hasn't really happened. Um, not much anyway. Not much. But maybe it will. It could. Now, Kia's Remote Start Parking Assist 2 is offered as a digital feature, as is content streaming. So they're looking to charge you for a few things that you can subscribe to. 
Car manufacturers seem to have gotten it in their heads that this is a good idea. A lot of them are doing it. We'll see how that goes. The EV9 comes with Kia's Digital Key 2, which uses ultra-wide band technology, allowing users to open and start their car using their smartphone, even when the key is in their pocket or their bag. A, as for Advanced Driver Assistance Systems, or ADAS, the list is extremely long, says Inside EVs, and it includes Rear Cross Traffic Alert, Collision Avoidance Assist, Blind Spot Collision Avoidance Assist, Lane Keeping Assist, Intelligent Speed Limit Assist, navigation-based smart cruise control and other features, which I won't go into details. Kind of would be better if it just said, um, we have you know, semi-automated driving. Uh, you didn't have to worry about, does it have one of 27 different assist features? I get confused by some of those, how they're, how they're even different to each other, I don't know. Now, how big is it? Well, it's a similar size to the Telluride, but it has an eight inch longer wheelbase. Here's the point, right? Eight inch longer wheelbase, but a similar size. So similar size to a Nissan Patrol and a Toyota Land Cruiser, but the wheelbase is longer. The interior space will be enormous in this car. So how big is it actually? Well, it's five meters, 5,010 millimeters long, 77.9 inches, so about 78 inches, which is 1,980 millimeters wide. But before I go on, go on, sorry, I should mention the inches for you Americans in length. It's 97 inches long, two meters wide, and it is 69 inches in height, which is 1,755 millimeters. The only significant difference regarding the wheelbase, it's eight inches longer for the EV9 versus the Telluride at 122 inches. Obviously, the longer the wheelbase in general, that means the more interior space you're gonna get in the car. Not always, but usually that's what that means. As you can see, this car will have a massively cavernous interior. And it actually does have four second row seating options. Those include a three-seater bench seat, a relaxation type first and second row seats that recline together when the car is charging, and a swivel type two-seater independent seats, which can swivel 180 degrees to face the third row. I'm not sure why you'd want to face the third row. Maybe you want to have a business meeting in your Kia, possibly, I guess. But anyway, the point is, this is a real SUV. It's big. There's not a lot of options in this class. This is gonna be one of the first. Will it be affordable? Well, depends what you mean. Prices are looking at between 60 to 90,000 US dollars. Aussies, you know, around about 80,000 to around about 110 to 120,000 dollars, depending on which model you go for. Kia says the EV9 has an aerodynamic coefficient of 0.28, achieved through the implementation of advanced features such as a 3D sculpted underbody cover, aerodynamic wheels for 19, 20, and 21 inch wheels, and innovative air curtains integrated into the front bumper. But it doesn't appear to have the best technology that Hyundai have, it should, which is the new air suspension, which can lower the car depending on what your, it can actually scan the road and see what's coming up and decide to lower the car in order to get more efficiency. Now that would give it a legitimate aerodynamic coefficient of 0.28. It doesn't have a coefficient of 0.28. It looks like a brick. It is a brick. There's no way to make a brick go through the air at 0.28. So I don't really know why they say this stuff. I don't think anyone believes it. But anyway, it will be, regardless of that, one of the best electric SUVs to hit the market next year. Now, don't forget, this car will also have a GT version. It'll have a, like a hot version to compete with the Tesla Model X Plaid. Obviously, it's nowhere near that kind of pace, but it will definitely be faster than its gasoline-powered competitors. As soon as we get more details about that vehicle, I'll have a new video. Let me know your thoughts. Would you consider the Kia EV9? Are you a fan? I'm definitely a fan. I'm, de I'm definitely liking it. I really hope this is a winner. I hope it succeeds. Do you think it will? Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.